Now to a group of Kaduna-based teenagers who call themselves the critics, who took social media by storm after the release of their first film. Using only a makeshift tripod and borrowed mobile phones, the filmmakers shot complicated sci-fi sequences seen only in Hollywood. They said they wanted to make movies like they do in the West. And soon, the young filmmakers were contacted by a Hollywood executive, congratulating them for their work and even sending them equipment to shoot more films. The critics have now morphed into a production company known as the Critics Company and have created more than 20 short films, often telling stories about robots, aliens, and people with supernatural abilities. Uh, well, I'm joined by the by two of the filmmakers who are a part of the critics, brothers uh, Richard and Ronald Yusuf. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much. And let's talk am about that uh, trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the idea behind uh, Timothy that we just watched there? And how, s how soon are you releasing it? Okay, um, Timothy is a sci fi short film. And it's out already. It's out on our oh, YouTube okay. channel. Sorry, yeah, no. Timothy is out. And um, the idea came. Okay, the story is by Raymond Yusuf. Yeah, he's my brother. And the idea came from this relaxer air accident. Mm -hmm. And then he saw that an accident with his air and he decided to build a story around a character that had that air style. And that was how the idea for Timothy came. Yeah, a sci fi mm -hmm. film. And then the film basically is about, um, from the film, it's about a boy that is from another planet, but then he was brought to Earth by soldiers from his planet and then his memory was wiped. So he doesn't really know anything about where he's from. And then he's just this guy on Earth roaming around the planet without no purpose. So, yeah, basically, that's the story around uh, Timothy. All right. And what has the reception been like um, since you released it? Okay, well, so Timothy has been getting a lot of positive reviews online. And it has been crazy. We have actually been, like, really happy. Uh, people have criticized the films. And most, about 99% of the film critics have been positive And it's been something really good and yeah and grateful. let's talk about why you keep doing short movies you don't do longer format uh, films and all of that uh is it because it's more easier for you to actually put this uh, on social media or you are already planning towards doing the longer version okay so uh, we're working towards working on a full feature film which is going to be shot entirely on the, on the mobile phone because that's where we started from and uh, so we started off making short films because we did not have like enough facilities. Our facilities couldn't match up into making a film probably one or 30 minutes long or even more. So we just used what we had to make what we could make and then we moved on with that. So right now, if you notice our, our most of our recent films, we have been upping the time frame. So like most of our films Yeah, and are I've longer. seen that the quality yeah. you know, has been improving. Because exactly. I, I was following you right on Twitter when you debuted right from, I think, 2016. Yeah. And uh, gradually you kept on receiving support, including yeah. the Hollywood package that came to you. Yeah. Let's talk about the equipment you received and how that equipment uh, actually helped you to improve your production. Okay, yeah. So um, big thanks to... JJ Abrams and uh, yeah, so the that's a Hollywood producer. Yes, yes, that's the director. He directed um, the director. Mission Impossible and Star Wars, and it's been crazy. So uh, we received uh, cameras, really good Netflix standard cameras. We received uh, really fast Alienware systems that could really like make our works faster and a lot easier. And uh, yeah, we received a lot more stabilizers, um, lights from. From, from various places and it has been really uh, it has been really nice we have been really grateful and it has really aided our work process we have really been able to make things better and nicer like you see on our YouTube channel uh, and uh, I'll come to you recently you were part of the King of Boys um, crew and all of that what role did you actually play in producing that movie by Kemi Adetiba and all of that okay uh, on King of Boys Return of the King uh, we were the VFX team so we did the VFX we did all the VFX on King of Boys 2, that's the new series that's on Netflix. And yeah, it was a very, very great experience because we were on set when we were shooting like most of the important scenes with really, really large scale VFX. So um, Kevin Aditiba brought us on set and then we were in the process with them during the shooting process and we were like there to direct how to shoot the VFX scene. So we worked on most, we worked on all the VFX shots yeah, in King of Boys 2. All oh, right, I can see you right there. I mean, it's been shown on there. Uh, and uh, let's talk about um, how you use mobile phones to actually uh, do these uh, short films. And um, what's 
what sort of um, formats you use in editing and how, you know, this quality still comes out looking very good. I mean, <laughs> some people wouldn't believe you use the mobile phones in doing that. <laughs> All right. So uh, we, so as you know, we worked with what we had. So using our mobile phones, we had to, we had to make use of uh, post, our post-production tools I mean, a lot, a lot better. So uh, normal um, Android phones, they shoot MP4. And so when we bring it into post, and when we're editing with our three gigabyte laptop, um, we would try our best to actually like make the quality come out real good by grading, by the editing, by even by the input of VFX shots. We also try to use that tool to actually make our films look better and make no one notice that it's a shot on a smartphone. And I'm really happy we're able to success. Yeah, and that. I was surprised that even after receiving your equipment, you still said that you'll continue shooting on mobile exactly, phones. So what's exactly. the inspiration behind that? Yeah, Shouldn't so you be upgrading into bigger cameras and all of that? Why do you still want to shoot on mobile phones? Okay, so uh, shooting on mobile phones is something that we started with, and then it's something that we, can, that we use to inspire this generation and the generation after, that you don't have to get big things. You, you don't have to get like flashy cameras or cameras was 1.5 million, all those kind of stuff. You don't really need all those. You could work with what you have. And you could also use what you have to make magic. And I come to the idea of calling your company the critics company. What, what's <laughs> the idea behind that? OK, um, funny story is that name actually started off as, it was not really serious when it started. So we're having this conversation in our room back then. And it was like a conversation about what name are we going to go with. And then at the time, we were trying to we were like really, really pissed at Nollywood movies, sorry. So, uh, and then we we're making short comedy videos, trying to mock Nollywood Skits, movies. Yeah, yes, yeah. As, as, at, as at that time. And then the name came up, The Critics, and then we just started going by The Critics. It wasn't really like a serious thing. But then, as we kept on going, we actually realized that the name actually fits what we wanted to go by what we're trying to So you're something do. trying to do something different from yes, what's obtainable exactly, in Hollywood. And uh, I want to ask if you have expanded uh, the vision of this company. Have you made it a formal company or still just uh, something little that you're playing around with? Because, I mean, if you want to go into real commercial transactions, I mean, you need to make this a formal company and all of that. So have you gone into making that something worthwhile? Okay, yeah, the critics company is no longer certified no longer a company we are playing with it is actually formal now mm -hmm. and we're open to doing business with a lot of people the yeah. company yeah it's the critics <laughs> company now full very time. interesting and this looks more like a family business because i mean this you are just representing the entire crew how many are you and is it just only a family business or you're beginning to bring people from outside you're beginning to recruit talented people and do you actually pay them Okay, so uh, yeah, of course, there's always a uh, EP because now we actually work like full time, we work commercial jobs, and we also make our films. So of course, there's always there are pays uh, from time to time. And then yeah, it's if it's it looks like a family business, but then we actually have people who are we are not related by blood bits, who are like in our family, like Ridwan. Ridwan is one of us, but he's not related to any of us. But most of the rest of us were cousins or brothers. Yeah, and so tell me about uh, the females. I mean, there was one of your movies I watched with some uh, yeah. small two young girls, you know, trying to talk about pink, having pink swords and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that like was trying to mimic Star Wars and all yeah, of that. Yeah. Tell me more about those young um, yeah. girls and how they are warming up into filmmaking and all of that. Okay, so uh, that was a Star Wars story. And uh, those ladies, those females, those girls, they are our younger sisters who we are related with. And uh, yeah, they, one of them has actually directed our first short film. And it has, I'm really happy she was able to actually pull that off. But then those, they always, they were always with us when we were always making films from since we were younger. And they also loved the arts. So of course, we had to bring them in and with them, show them. Very interesting. So yeah. having this more as a family thing uh, saves you lots of costs. Is that the reason why you have continued this way? Um, no. Well, right now we are open to more people coming. We don't have to be related to <laughs> the critics <laughs> company. You don't have to be related to anyone. Uh, we are open to, you know. Okay. Now let's talk about the kind of support yeah. you are actually getting from Nigerians, not just waiting for someone from Hollywood to actually support you. And what kind of adventure are you getting into? What's the next big thing for you? Okay. As, as, a, as a crew. Okay, okay. So uh, right now we are working towards uh, we are working towards uh, making one of the best 
films out of Africa. We are, we are working towards that over a long time, and we hope we're actually able to achieve that. So um, we we want to we want to keep on I want to keep on making like these films, and it's it's just something we want to keep on doing and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's expensive to do these movies, so that's why I'm asking you: what sort of support yeah. are you getting? Do you get, um, you know, corporate institutions, I mean, coming to you to say, okay, we want to partner? Or uh, how have you been making money to actually sustain this uh, business venture? Okay. Uh, at this point we are in, we have not really got a lot of um, collaborations with corporate businesses. And we are open to collaborating with corporate businesses, but we've not really had a lot of them now. And we're also looking at making full feature films. And then we have not made any yet. So I think, just like you said, it's just, easier and cheaper to keep making the short films for our side but you know we are open to collaborating with major companies that want to sponsor full features all right very interesting indeed um, when we come back from this short break i want to know how much it costs to actually produce one of those movies and if indeed you actually make money in return you're still watching the arise interview plenty more still ahead including we continue the conversation with this young nigerian filmmakers making waves in the entertainment industry still with us Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Somna Sambo, and we have the Critics Company still here with us, where we have been talking about these young Nigerian filmmakers doing great things uh, from Kaduna. They've uh, shot more than 20 films under their belt, and they are making their mark as creatives, putting science fiction and Nigeria on the map. And I have um, Read One uh, Adeni joining us alongside Richard uh, Yusuf. Uh, Read One, I mean, he, he one of them was actually just talking about you now, that you're the non-family member. I mean, since you joined this crew, how has it been like? What's your experience with the critics company? Yeah, so far so good. It's been fun. It's been a lot of, um, a lot of work because of course there's been a lot of expectation, so we've been working day in, day out to just make sure that we get to the next level of where we are, but so far it's been, it's been good. Let's talk about the, the challenges of uh, shooting uh, sci-fi movies, I mean, because yeah. that's, w that's the uh, niche you've carved for yourself. Shooting sci-fi movies, you know, takes a lot of uh, computer-generated graphics and it's yeah. very expensive, but how have you been able to put all of this together? Again, um, I'll start by saying, by thanking um, J.J. Abrahams, Franklin Leonard, you know, great guys who have sent us stuff all the way from, you know, Hollywood for us to make these films. Without these gears that we, they had sent, we'll never be able to make, you know, these films that we make now. We're able to make them back then because, of course, they were on a smaller scale. But with this current scale, we wouldn't have been able to make it without them. So some of the challenges are just, you know, the fact that probably you have electricity challenges, you have software issues because sometimes this software is crash because we, we don't have, because we don't have like the, right the of course, or the legit versions <laughs> because you can't afford them. So you just use the versions you have and they crash. And sometimes it's just, you know, you know, explaining what you do to people. So if you're a, maybe a regular filmmaker, you can easily explain, but sometimes we want to shoot somewhere at a location and they say, okay, tell me which film you they shoot for here. And we try to explain and they're like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes while we're shooting, because you are interacting with a green screen or you're just doing stuff alone and then people are passing, they don't see you acting with anybody. Yeah, they don't see the full picture. And they just, they just <laughs> wonder what you're doing. So uh, it's not a challenge, but like, I feel like those are the only uh, things. All right, and know. I come to you, Richard. Uh, let's talk about the, how, how long as some of these uh, short movies that you actually shoot, what's the average length of um, your movie? Uh, uh, and then um, when you shoot these movies, how, do you actually sell them or you get paid online by uploading it? Okay, so uh, right now, most sometimes we monetize from our YouTube contents. And also, yeah, sometimes we get commissioned by uh, companies to actually make films like Click. For example, The Click, which is a film we just released, it's also on our YouTube, and uh, it was sponsored by Kapaski, which is an anti -soft, anti virus yeah. software company. So that's the, that's the route we take. Yeah, and what's the average length of your short films? And yeah, all the average length of our short films is about from 10 minutes down to 20 minutes. But then we have um, another, uh, we have this thing we call um, micro VFX short films, which you post on our YouTube channel. And those short films are very brief, stories they are, they are very brief films where we actually like tell stories from like one minute. yes one minute each so like that's one of so if, if you are actually to get more support or funding to scale up what you're doing what exactly will you be looking at doing and 
uh, what, what's the, what are the investment opportunities in the critics company, I mean, <laughs> for potential but investors? The, the investment opportunity, of course, is large. It's huge because there's a there's a big gap right now in the Nigerian, um, you know, sci-fi space. Or in terms of that, there's a big there's a huge gap because almost nobody's doing it. Yeah, some people are doing it, but we don't have a lot of people doing it, so there's a gap. But in terms of if we get investment, what are we going to use it for? Right now, because of this skill gap, we need to educate ourselves and a lot of young people like us because we have realized that if we're going to make you know, the next Spider-Man film, we need a lot of technical know-how. You know, seven, ten people cannot make that film. <laughs> so we need a lot of young people like us who will learn this skill. And this skill doesn't come cheap. You know, they need computers to learn, they need some books, they go on YouTube to learn, you know, a lot of data, a lot of, you know, you need internet, you need uh, power. So if we're going to, you know, invest, if we get any of investment opportunities, we're going to use that to educate ourselves because we need to know this, we need to learn more and also bring in people who will learn with us so that we can come together and make the bigger films that we want to make. Let's talk about uh, you guys coming from Kaduna. How has that um, upbringing helped you? I mean, you're operating from a northern city that a lot of people will be surprised that. I mean, a sci-fi movie is being shot from the northern part of the country because they don't think that the western movies actually sell more in that part of the country. Uh, let's talk more about your upbringing and how that has had um, an effect on you. Thank you. So uh, the staying in Kaduna, growing up in Kaduna has actually been one of our one of the things that has pushed us to where we are now. Because being in a place where you only have just mega facilities, where you have only uh, not really much, where you don't have really much, there, like there are no opportunities. Especially and then there's yes. a, there's no film industry exactly, so much exactly. like that. Yeah, so now we are being pushed to work with what we have and work with what we have around us and minimize our our sp spending or however I'm going to put it, cost. but yeah, our cost. So we being in Kaduna has actually like really like helped us to actually like stay on track that's really disciplined us and, and you think uh, maybe yeah. you're building a film industry there maybe that that will be yes. referred to as caddy wood yeah. or something like that <laughs> 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 because just like you have canny wood in and all of that we, we want to be part of the wood that already exists mm -hmm. um <laughs> we just we just want to make great films want to make great films and mm -hmm. but you know just from what he said Kadna has really helped us to you know make our films the way we want to see them because we have a very unique you know, landscape, you know, the dry lands, the mountains. So Kadnal really, really, really is very different, you know, when it comes to other places. So this has helped us to, you know, create more. Sometimes in Kaduna, you know, we can go to four locations or five locations to shoot. But when Lagos wants and we try to go to two lo locations, yeah, and it didn't <laughs> work. <laughs> like, it didn't work. In the day, we do only one thing and we're done. And we're like, no, we get people yeah. also coming to you yeah. to want to pay their monies <laughs> and, and all of exactly. that. Exactly. So, like, That's Kaduna one. just gives us that opportunity to create, you know, the best. Yeah, and then one, one good thing I, I've, I've seen from your short movies that you produce that you make use of um, uh, locations very well. I mean, not, you know, staying like the average Nigerian movie where you'll be acting inside rooms yeah. or houses and all of yeah. that. You don't see lots of the landscape and all of that. Tell us how you make use of these locations yeah. uh, to actually promote uh, maybe tourism or people get to know more about this. You know, yeah. I saw you actually making use of rivers, lakes and all of that. Yeah. Tell us more about yeah. that. We, we also do not, sometimes we also do not know that these places exist. So sometimes we just go out for location scouting. We can take a day and just say, oh, today we're just going to explore yeah. and go see our city on what it looks like. And we just go around every day. So when we see these locations, we write them down. And then when we have a story, we take the story is there but one is, uh, let me call it expo here why you see our films out there because when we started shooting we we're shooting on mobile phones and so there was no light <laughs> it's only sun that we had yeah, <laughs> so, uh, so the solar to make use of so if you want to shoot indoors you need lights that we did not have so mm -hmm. before you knew it we started becoming very comfortable shooting outdoors mm -hmm. because of course it made more sense and the la landscape made a lot of sense to us you know, and so, and that's how all of our films now, you see a high percentage of these films are outside, of course, because, you know, they make, you know, these shots better. We have natural light, so, yeah. yeah so how, how much have you inspired other young Nigerians who actually want to take into filmmaking from the sci-fi perspective? Do you go to the streets and see yourself being hailed as movie stars and all of that, uh, big creators, or even with some people thinking you're making more money? 
ああ、オッケー、いや、パリマニパピバクシリティングワラグミリオナーズ。ファミリー。オフトラベルトチャイナ、アンドゴントジャパン、アンドザスカンドストフ。バイエ、ウェアインナイジェリア、アズヨー